First couple of words uh, about the CloudFresh, the company I work for. Uh, we are the global uh, partner for uh, Google Cloud and also Google Workspace. Uh, we are the premier partner, uh, Zendesk and Asana and GitLab, and we have the highest uh, rank of uh, certification uh, and partnership with those companies. Uh, we have uh, over 1,400 customers in 50 countries. And uh, what is nice about us is that we uh, tend to uh, cover and uh, do that. Uh, we, we tend to cover, cover the whole cycle of the uh, customer's um, uh, uh, solution uh, for uh, even for the SMB uh, SaaS uh, solutions, but for sure also for the uh, enterprise solutions like uh, Google Cloud, from uh, pre-sales, architecture, uh, audit of for uh, your current infrastructure, uh, then sales will give will uh, the best financial solutions uh, uh, for the uh, uh, for buying the solution uh, and the best uh, paying options and afterwards we do the implementations the support the audits the consulting on the advancements on on uh, on solution and uh, on um, how do they make it the uh, maximally um, effective? These are a couple of names uh, uh, which uh, of customers which trust us. Uh, I I'm sure that uh, all of you you know uh, at least a couple of them, and uh, so uh, working with us, you will. Uh, find yourself at pretty good company. Now, uh, going to the solution itself. Uh, backup and uh, disaster recovery uh, poses a lot of uh, challenges uh, and a lot of challenges uh, before the different stakeholders at uh, companies. And uh, summarizing them, uh, the solutions uh, solution are solutions are uh pretty complex and pretty expensive uh expensive to the point that uh relatively small companies can't even afford to uh, utilize the uh well reasonable backup solution and the main points main pain points uh but not limited to are the large RPO. RPO stands for uh, recovery point objective. Is the uh, the like amount of data you lose if you have to uh, revert the your data to the backup state. Large RTO. RTO stands for uh, recovery time objective. This is the time uh, you may afford for uh, service, your business service, uh, for being absent in, in, the, in your business. And in standard solutions, both of them are pretty long. Uh, the solutions, as I mentioned before, are pretty expensive uh, because you have to buy the uh, infrastructure and licenses beforehand so for some period of time, usually it's one year at least. Uh, and so that means that you pay a lot of money beforehand and you have your infrastructure underutilized. So the money you spend, uh, well, doesn't give you uh, any, any use. And the last but not least is the complexity of the solutions you usually if you have uh, even back just backup uh, you use 
some few solutions. And uh, if you have the disaster recovery, that's even more. All of them are expensive. All of them are pretty hard to implement and uh, pretty hard to operate. So the uh, solution for it is uh, Google Cloud Backup and Disaster Recovery uh, Service, uh, which I, I will uh, like go through the bullet points and then uh, go through some details in the uh, next slides. But uh, is the solution the single solution which may uh, give you the possibility to operate your Google Cloud or on-prem infrastructure with different operating systems uh, or even uh, hypervisors like VMware, Windows for sure, different flavors of uh, Linuxes, and it is application aware uh, on pretty any exotic flavor of the database you may use uh, in your data center. Uh, like starting from the Microsoft SQL or Postgres, something very usual to uh, IBM DB2, Oracle, or uh, Subhana. Uh, with hundreds of millions of files, with thousands of VMs, with hundreds of terabytes databases, uh, working from the single console and doing the backup, recovery, and disaster recovery. It is efficient, as efficient as you, uh, I would say you could imagine, but you couldn't. Uh, it is uh, incremental forever. So you make the whole, the mm, full backup only the, on the first cycle of backup. And then you live uh, with uh, incrementals for all your systems, databases, and files you may have. Uh, and it utilizes the uh, its application where, as I uh, told, it is uh, it works directly with different APIs like Safana, SafePoint, uh, Oracle, Arman, and uh, and more and more. And it allows you to uh, recover the data virtually uh, instantly. So you don't wait for the data to recover, which may which may make uh, a lot of time, really a lot of time. Uh, these are like you, like I say, five uh, uh, customers uh, which implemented the cloud backup and disaster recovery service. Before that, uh, they had oracles, uh, SQLs, which had. Uh, pretty big, which were pretty big. And uh, the customers had to wait like from two days to 10 days uh, for data to recover. Uh, and then they could work with the data, which uh, for the customers with such amount of data, you may imagine it is critical. Uh, they're like out of business for a few days or even weeks. And after the cloud backup and disaster recovery solution implementation, uh, the recovery time uh, shortens to like 10 to 20 minutes. And we should say that it is not the time uh, that data is available for uh, applications. It is time for application to be uh, on track, up and running. Uh, one of the customers, ATB Financial, uh, the, uh, it's the financial institution from Canada with the assets uh, more than 55 billion Canadian dollars. Um, most uh, most uh, workloads are like 50 terabytes of, uh, of HANA data. They migrated uh, to Google Cloud and uh, also, which is interesting about the, with this customer, they uh, engaged with a BigQuery uh, business data warehouse, which allowed them to shorten the uh, um, business insights uh, queries uh, 
uh, execution in 117 uh, times factor, which is pretty big. But uh, in speaking about the backup and disaster recovery, uh, you see uh, the customer is big, a lot of data, like 50 terabytes of only sub HANA. Uh, and uh, the uh, RPO, uh, which is the amount of data, uh, like put on time uh, between the uh, backups is like 15 minutes. And RTO, the time if they have the total crash of data uh, to the time they're back on track up and running is less than five minutes the, uh, can i ask uh, the question put it the into the uh, into the chat and we'll uh, we'll answer in the q a section thank you so uh the standard uh standard scheme of the of working as you have your infrastructure with your files with your databases with your operating system either on uh, google cloud or on premises then uh it is backed up by the uh, backup and disaster recovery uh, appliance uh you may utilize the uh, persistent disk um, cache uh, so if you if you are on-prem the um, appliance is also on-prem and if you have the like data problems but not the data center uh, destroyed you may uh, revert the data from the local cache so not, no, no uh, reason uh, and no need to wait for the data uh, downloaded from the cloud. Then it replicates the increments. The first backup for sure is full and then the increments which are uh, actually the block level, block level difference between, between the previous backup and uh, current backup which is much less than you, you, you would do uh, with the standard systems. Then it's uh, uploaded uh, to the Google Cloud and then it's stored on the uh, blob storage, uh, which is cloud storage and available for the instant mounting, uh, mounting from the uh, servers from the operating systems. Well, uh deep, a, a bit deeper dive i wouldn't say deep dive but deep, a bit deeper dive to the uh, technology stop procuring the full backups because uh, uh, any standard technology on the market it does the full backup then it uh, goes through the increments during the week because the uh, full backup you may do usually only on the weekend because it's the uh, copying of all the data from the server which is the pretty high workload and then if you uh, when you're recovering you uh, recover the full backup and then the incremental backups this technology works other way if you use the macintosh uh, you may know the uh, time machine when you want, may uh, enter the one of the point in time copies and uh, just have access to all the data so it merges the increments uh, nearly instantly so you don't have to uh, live with uh, very big uh, backup windows it uh, reduces the backup window in factors of up to 20 it also reduces the uh, impact on the applications in the more or less safe fa the same factor and we remember that it works with the native apis of dbs so uh every point in time copy is absolutely consistent then recover in minutes uh all the point in time copies are available for 
uh, instant mount to the application, to the operating system. So uh, you shouldn't wait for the whole data uh, reverted to the uh, initial uh, data store. Uh, it is mounted and then uh, travels to the initial data store in the background. Uh, so it is for sure a bit slower, but you are in business right away. Then, uh, more than this, uh, you may uh, mount or uh, you recover from any point in time copy. Uh, so if you have the problems with some uh, database which uh, corrupted data due to uh, like some incorrect request or for example uh, malware uh, you may find the state of the data you need and revert from uh, this point in time copy and system allows you you to revert the uh, several uh, point in time copies for for different services simultaneously and uh, what is uh, uh, very important is automated log recovery for for databases. The ar orchestration. We know all. Uh, if 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 you worked with uh, backups, uh, you know that you make backups and pray that it will uh, revert in the in the case of uh, data corruption or data loss. Uh, and uh, to have the possibility to uh, make rehearsals on that, uh, you may have, you should have the uh, infrastructure, which is the double of your current work infrastructure, which is pretty expensive. Uh, uh, I would say it doubles your infrastructure cost, but it more than doubles your infrastructure cost. Uh, with the uh, Backup and disaster recovery service, you have the possibility to disaster recovery uh, your uh, infrastructure to other regions, for example, in uh, Google Cloud. Uh, you may uh, like script the uh, procedure and uh, it reverts like on the one button push uh, and you it reverts in minutes, as we know. Uh, then you see your infrastructure up and running. You see you may uh, run any uh, integrity test you may want. And after that, uh, well, you kill uh, the disaster recovery copy. Uh, you are sure the, that you are uh, on the safe side, uh, but you pay for the infrastructure for like virtually half an hour. Some couple and this comes at no additional cost is the built-in uh, functionality the next uh, additional thing you may uh, retain your point in time copies like for a week or two or month but you may take it for the decades uh, it doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't influence your speed of working of or uh, any other factors uh, just the ability of, uh, of, of uh, accessing the those point in time copies, but if you need it for uh, any uh, for any like reason for audit or something, you have this uh, ability with no additional cost. Uh, the next thing is that uh, if you need uh, for your development quality assurance testing or something the your uh, your real data uh, you may make the uh, rapid db clones uh, and uh, use it for the testing or qa or something and uh, you utilize this data uh, as as long as you need and then kill it and then you have the possibility to um, raise it anytime so uh this functionality i know that there are some tools in the market which got pretty high 
but this is functionality is also built in with at no additional cost. So, uh, and so uh, you have uh, a pretty big uh, flexibility for uh, RTO, RPO, and also for the uh, infrastructure structure, uh, architecture uh, at all. So you, for different uh, use cases, you may, you may use uh, instant mount with no read cache or small cache or large cache or full restore with a large cache. So uh, you are the, you are drive uh, the story uh, as you may need, uh, and by the matter of fact, uh, uh, other uh, solutions uh, give you only the last option. So uh, wrapping up, uh, the small RPO with uh, ability to do the. Uh, uh, point in time copies, which is absolutely, which are absolutely consistent. So you, if in case of uh, some trouble, trouble with your data or your infrastructure, you lose as much as fifteen minutes. Small RTO, as you may mount uh, your data uh, instantly. You pay for only what you use. Uh, in fraction uh, of one GB byte with. Uh, um, entrance of one GB byte. So you may not uh, pay uh, less than for one GB byte of, byte of data, but then you just pay for what you use. That's the, uh, I, I guess, the best financial model on the market. And it's simple. It is, uh, and uh, guys from Google uh, will show you. It's the simple minimal solution for all your possible backups on on-prem or in GCP. So uh, like a bit of uh, functionality, uh, each row is pretty critical, but with the standard legacy software or new entrance to the market, because we know some uh, new solutions on the market, but uh, it is completely supported by the backup and disaster recovery solution uh, and uh, have uh, limited or no support by uh, any other solution on the market. And last but not least, the price. I guess all of you are interested. So you have what you pay for the ability to uh, back up locally and into the cloud uh, of your data is three cents per month per GB byte. This is virtually free. For different databases, it may uh, it costs from nine to twenty four uh, cents for the GB byte for months, but it's still very very affordable, and that gives the possibility uh, and opportunity for the even small companies to utilize the uh, enterprise grade solution for the. Um, even the pretty small infrastructure and be on the safe side. So that's more or less uh, everything I want to say during this presentation. And that's the time of demo. Uh, Victoria, the stage is all yours. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Maxim. Morning, everyone. Uh, so, as Maxim said, my name is Victoria Uramovska. I'm a cloud in, um, customer engineer here at Google Cloud, based out of Dublin. And today, with my colleague Polius, we're gonna do like a short demo um, to show you how to deploy and also how to recover your data. So, we kind of divided it into two sections. So, what I'm gonna show you is the initial setup enabling of the backup and disaster recovery service in Google Cloud, deploying your appliance in the console, and then I'm gonna pass on to Polius, who's gonna demonstrate to you how fast it is to actually recover the files and how easy it is to set up. So just bear with me one second to share my screen. Okay, I think it's this one. Take a second. Perfect, you should all be able to see it now. So for those of you who maybe are not familiar, um, I don't wanna assume anything. So when you log into our Google Cloud Console, that's just a welcome page you're gonna have. 
here on top you can choose your project i'm going to show you two projects today because deployment of the console itself like the management console takes a while so first i'm going to show you um the steps that have to be taken beforehand and then we're going to move on to the console so how we want to do it you can either find it here on the navigation menu but personally i prefer just to search for it so i'm going to put backup PR. when i open this it should load and i did not enable the service i mean yes so if you're using it for the first time you have to enable it so it's very fast and easy it literally takes just a few seconds for it to do if you want to learn more about it as well you will have some overview key features benefits an introductory video like throughout the entire console whenever you're doing something there's a lot of instructions so even if you're a beginner in the field you can like read yourself and educate yourself and this is a great example the setup i'm going to show you now you only do it once but we suggest i mean not suggest we give you an opportunity to watch that introductory video that explains to you the steps that have to be taken what to take into consideration so like if you're ever in doubt there are resources as you go to kind of analyze it. I'm going to exit it now because we're not going to watch the video. Um, so in this section, it's important to highlight that now we are in Google Cloud Console, but for the backup and disaster recovery, we have a separate management console, which I'm going to show you how to deploy now. And there are two main components. So this is the management console and also the uh, backup recovery appliance, which we are going to um, deploy here as well. So what appliance does, it basically performs of the capture and the movement and storage of the data. Here is also the diagram. If I'm very visual, so for me, it's great. It shows you how it works. You have that managed console. It's connected by a VPC peering, and then you have your projects here and then the appliance. So there are important things to remember for example and um, the backup and disaster recovery console it's not available on in all the regions however you can support like you can back up things from different regions the and important the part is that the console can only like i will show you now when i see, select the location not of or not all of our locations are available um but not to go into too much detail please please if you have any questions in the meantime put them in the chat I know I talk a lot, so I will try to be as concise as possible. We'll just hide that for a minute. Um, when we're important thing to remember as well, maybe people are not aware. So the main prerequisites from the networking uh, point of view, you need to have a VPC set up already with your subnets. Um, there are some firewalls. Same with VPC. Um, so VPC, it's a virtual private cloud. It's a global service here at Google. So basically, it allows you to connect different services between each other where they're under the same network. Um, I have one created already because I do wanted to shorten the time. But as you can see, as I mentioned before, everything here is for you. So if you're new to it, there are nodes that you can follow. You have a tutorial here you can follow. You have how-to videos. So throughout the entire process, you will not get lost. But let's move on to the configuration itself. So as I mentioned, not all the locations are available. As you can see, we only have like five from Americas, we have two from Asia and two from Europe. That doesn't mean you cannot back up services from other locations. It's just for the management console. It's just important to keep in mind. Today, I'm going to use uh, Europe West 1 because that's where I set up my uh, VPC network. I have my VPC here that I prepared earlier on. And then the next step is to set up the connection. So I'm just going to click here. And if you wish, you can choose one or more of the existing IPs already. But I'm just going to go and use the automatic allocation because I want to make my life easier. And then you just check if we're creating the connection. This is my VPC network. Yes, this is the one I want to use. And that's going to be the name of the allocated IP ranges. So I'm just going to cre cre click on create connection. I'm so sorry, the coffee didn't kick in, I think, yet. So it takes probably like 20, 30 seconds. It doesn't take long. 
Um, the longest process, are, I'm going to show you when we finish those steps, it's actual deployment of the backup and uh, disaster recovery management console, which can take up to 40 minutes. But after we did it, do it once, we don't have to do it ever again. So it's just once and done kind of situation. I'm going to take one more second. Um, and then also, just while we wait, um, if you go to our documentation, there is a lot of um, information like best practices when setting up your appliance or deploying your management console. So like there's a lot of detail, even if you're not familiar, you can go through the steps and kind of, it feels like a guided experience almost because you have so much information that you can support it on and resources. So I think it's really great, like for doing it first time. Oh, see, we're all done now. Perfect. I'm happy with that. I have my region, I have my VPC and I have my connection. Let's go continue. So the next step is for us to actually set up the appliance. I'm going to give it a very creative name because I'm not creative with names. So I'm going to do it my appliance, my target project, which is the project I'm currently in. So yes, I'm happy with that. This is uh, great that we got that error because it's important to remember. So as I mentioned before, the console guides you through it. So now I want to do my appliance. However, I'm missing some APIs. So let's see what I need. Let's click view requirements. So it's telling me that I have to enable some additional APIs. So if you just click on them, I'm going to open them in separate tabs. Um, just not to switch between. So I opened all of them, I'm gonna enable them quickly. And then after they're sure, all enabled, really it's gonna two seconds. Hey, what you did. So if you remember how we went the first time to the backup and disaster recovery, I had to enable the service. It's kind of similar. For this to work, I need those specific APIs to be enabled. So we have the first one is um, the key management service. Then we have Cloud Resource Manager and Identity and Access Management and the workloads as well. If you used any of those previously in your project, you will not have to do that step. But because I created a new project just for the purpose of today's demo, I do have to enable them today. And it's exactly the same as I did at the beginning with backup and VR. You literally open the page and it tells you enable API. You click the button, few seconds, and it's good to go. As I see, I think they're all done. And yeah, we are, all, we are on green now. And even if you're on green, you can still see them. So it's actually gonna see you, uh, show you which permissions you would need, which APIs are required. So like, it gives you the backbone to really understand it in depth. Um, okay, I'm going to just close this. So we're going to go now to our Europe West zone because I want to stay with it. Belgium, and we are in 1B. I'm happy with that. I also created the subnetwork before when I created my VPC network. So subnetwork, because VPC is global, so subnetworks, they are aligned to regions. So my subnetwork is in Europe one West, West one, sorry. Um, so I will select it. If you have another one, so you can choose from the multiple ones. Um, I think it's a very good practice to document all the settings that you're doing. So later on, if something goes wrong or you have to debug something, or maybe you're moving to a different project and someone else is taking over, it's really good to have it just maybe like a short table and, you know, this is my subnetwork. It's in this region. That's the IP addresses, etc. Just highlight for me, kind of to keep that in mind. And the next thing to choose from is the storage type you want to use in your appliance. So there are three options here. As you can see, again, there's a short description for all of them. So you can go for minimal capacity. You can go for standard persistent or SSD persistent disk. So it depends just of what your requirements are, how much data you want to back up. And as you can see, like for example, to, um, 
this one, the first one is only if you want to protect your um, compute engine virtual machines and nothing else. So it's like a very, very basic for making snapshots. If you want to do something more complicated, so for example, um, the middle one here for standard persistent disk, it's recommended for VMware engine virtual machines and databases or file systems. So it really depends what your requirements are. So I think it's really important to understand it before you start setting it up. So then you don't have to, you know, restart it in your project or, you know, scrap all the work that you did already. So I'm going to choose standard persistent disk today um, just for the purpose of my of the demo. And I'm going to click a begin installation. As, as you can see, it says here installation can take up to one hour. As I mentioned before, this is the process that takes the longest, but you only have to do it once. So I click this what's going to happen now. So as you can see, the screen changed. We didn't see that before. It gives us an option, log into management console, because what will happen after this activation is going to finish, we're going to have a button here to move to another um, interface, which is the actual backup and disaster recovery console. I have it deployed in another project already. So let me just ch change my tabs here. Um, Okay, so that's how it looks after it deploys. As you can see, the status shows it's ready. Um, you can have a look at the API credentials if you want to. But what we're going to do now, I'm just going to go in and click Login to Management Console. What's going to happen, it's going to open the new, um, new console and the new tab. So I'm also going to change. Let's do this. Can take a second for it to load. Amazing. Um, just a quick intro of the console before I pass on to Polius. So, as I've been saying all this time, whenever you access the service for the first time, most of the time you even have either have an opportunity to start a tour or some information additional that you can kind of read on. I don't want to take a tour, so I'm gonna skip it for now. But I would really recommend to kind of get familiar with what all the tabs do, where options you can explore, etc. And when you log in, you have your dashboard here, which is, I think, really cool because you can see all the jobs that happen. So as you can see, I have some failed jobs, but that's OK. Um, I have some managed applications. I can see if I have snapshots, you know, the data if I was protected, all the main information, you can see it at a glance here. And then from there, you can analyze it further. Like I'm a very visual person, so I really like dashboards like this. So it gives you like an overview of everything what's happening in your backup and DR service. And with this, because I talk a lot, I'm just going to pass over to Polius. So he's going to go in a little bit more details about setup. Thanks very much for that, Victoria. Really appreciate it. That was really good. So um, hi, everyone. Good morning. I uh, hope everyone's well. Uh, my name is Polius. I'm also a customer engineer here at Google. So today I'll walk you through how to restore an actual file. So let's say somebody comes in and deletes something of yours that's very important and critical to your workloads, and you want to restore it. So this is kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how that works, the setup process, and how long it actually will take. So I'll just share my screen now and sh should be able to see it soon enough. Yep. I think, yep, it's visible now. OK, so the first things first, we log into the management console, as Victoria said earlier. So the first thing we need to do is pretty much have something to, to be installed. So it's called an agent. So let's say I want to back up a Windows machine in my example. So how do I do that? So I need to go to Manage. Then I have to go to the Appliances. So this will happen once uh, the sub is done, so like Victoria showed you earlier on. So this would be my appliance. This was set up beforehand, so we don't have to wait. So once I click on Configure Appliance, it'll open in a new window. So this is a separate interface for the actual appliance itself. And there's a couple options here, so you can have a look at them. So you can set the warning levels, the save mode. Um, there's a couple of other options, um, which you can actually join another uh, appliance to it. So it's a pair, so it's it's like a failover kind of scenario. So if, if anything happens to one of the appliances, the other one takes over its place, and it still continues running your backups. So it's very good for, for that aspect. But what we're actually really interested in is the agent management. 
So as you can see, you have one already installed, which I'll use for later, but I wanted to show you how it actually works. So what you have to do initially is download an agent. So if I click here, so in my example is the Windows one. So if you can see with a little flag, so there's one for uh, Linux, for Ubuntu, for standard Linux, so any other flavors that you have. So these are the supported operating systems that you can actually back up. So initially what you need to do is get the agent and then download it to your Windows machine. So this would be my example Windows machine that I will use to create the backups on. So the connector itself would be an executable, in my case, because it's a Windows machine. So what you do is pretty much double click it, install it, it will go through the setup, and there's one critical component that at the end of the setup, there's a key provided to you. So you need to keep a note of that key. It expires in three hours. So you have three hours to set it up, but don't worry if it does expire, you can actually reset it and go again. So you'll have a new new key. However, remember you need to re-add the host again if you're gonna replace the key. So next things we're gonna do is pretty much, uh, we're gonna come back to the console and I'll show you how to actually add the, um, the host. So my Windows machine, for example. So we come back here, we go to the manage, we go to the hosts, and then I already have one here, but I will actually show you how to actually add one from scratch. So let's say this will be my test host. I just fill in the, the blanks pretty much. The main main things is the, the ones with the red star. So I know my IP would be something like this. We click the little plus, so it's added in. So then I can actually choose which appliance this machine will use to uh, create the backups from. So let's say if you have multiples, you can actually choose certain ones that will do the backups for those certain machines. So let's say if you have um, a lot of machines, you might not want some of them to go through a certain um, appliance. Um, and also the very important and critical bits is here. So you don't need to specify the port number unless you actually changed it. So don't worry about that one. But the main things here is the actual username. So let's say this will be your local username or or a domain username, which would have access to certain privileges to actually perform the backups and install the agent and you know allow it to work. Then you input the password of your uh, admin, let's say user. And that's where the secret key comes in. So that's the one we created in, in here after the installation of the connector. So this key will be pasted here. It's quite long, so it'll be like very, very, very long. Once you paste it in, you click add. So in my case, I'm not gonna do that because I already have it created and it also takes a little bit of time to actually authenticate and do all the checks. So we'll go ahead and do this. So I'll show you what I have here at the moment. So this is my appliance that I've already created. So it's pretty much standard. Um, it, it shows you the port numbers and everything else. Um, also, you will see here. So this is what it kind of would look like. So this is filled in for you automatically, as I mentioned before, so you don't have to worry about that unless you changed it. So there's not nothing too exciting here. Okay, so next thing, what we need to do is create an actual backup plan. So we'll go and create one in here, which is a, an under templates. So I already have one here, but I can show you from scratch what it would look like. So let's say I wanna create a new template. So I'll call it template one. And I click the little plus here. So I wanna create a backup that will go into snapshot. So there's a couple of pluses here. So if you wanna create a mirror, you click the plus here. If you wanna uh, create one that goes to on vault, then you create one here. In my case, I will choose snapshot. So in here, you create a policy, so policy one. So you can choose um, which day you want it to create the backup. So it also allows you to select, let's say a window, during that window, it will create those backups and run, run let's say once per, per window and that's it. You can also change it so you could have it like run every 24 hours. Um, also the retention periods, you can choose from minutes to hours to months and years and such. So it, it depends on yourself. So you could retain it for hundred days. So just remember that if you retain it for two days, after the two days, the snapshot has expired. So that means it's deleted, it's no longer usable. So do keep that in mind. If you wanna go back more than two days, you're not gonna be able to. So I'm not gonna create this because I already have one created um, just to save some time. Um, and I'll show you the one I have created. So let me just go back and I don't wanna save it. So this is the plan I've created at the moment. So it creates a snapshot um, and it runs once per day. So uh, for the purpose of this demo, I created one that's gonna stay for hundred days. 
so I don't have to worry about it actually expiring on me. Um, so the next, actual next step is creating the full backup. So let's say what I want to do is pretty much create a backup. So let's say I'll go here, backup and recovery, click backup. And in my case, I want to backup all of the applications on my machine. All right. So what do I do? So I click there. And pretty much, I see my machine here. So I call the Windows Server. I have to select it, and I click Discover. So what that does is pretty much discovering all the applications that I have currently running on my machine. So that could be, I don't know, uh, Microsoft SQL or uh, PostgreSQL or anything like that, or even any other application that I have running there. It will discover. So OK, so it shows here that it was successfully started and it completed. So it discovered all my applications, so it knows what it needs to back up. Next thing, we need to go and to go to the applications itself. So App Manager, Applications. And here we go. We can see our, our machine, the one that we do want to back up. What it will do is pretty much back up everything. So it's using the backup template I've created. It's using the local profile, and it has a friendly name, which is Windows Server, which is what I gave it initially. So in our case, what we want to do is manage the actual backup plan. Okay. So in here, we can see here, if I wanted to do it, so I can do it right now. So let's say I wanted to not wait for tomorrow or any other day that it's going to you know, create my backup. I can just run it there, give it a label. Let's say I did it today, which is, I don't know, May 11, and then I'll run it now. And that means it will create uh, another snapshot for me right now, and it will start doing it. And it, it will pretty much run through it and, and take a backup of it. So now, what we want to do is pretty much show you how I would restart a machine. So let's say I, I came in, I'm a bad user, I'm going to start deleting things. So let's say I have a couple of test files here, and I'm going to pretty much delete them, right? So I'll delete them. I'll empty the bin. OK, they're gone. Um, I have, I've lost them. So now they're, cr they're critical to my workloads, and I can't do my work anymore. So what do I do? OK, so come back to the console here. I'm going to go to Recover. I'll type this. So everything that we create initially, you can see here. I'll go to Next. And in here, you can see kind of um, like a train track, let's say, of all my snapshots that I've ever created. So initially, I had a couple of here uh, on the 9th, and then I had one here. And I have another one that I've created just this morning. OK, so let's say I want to restore everything from, from this morning before I've done anything crazy on my machine. So what do I do? So I go here, click the little arrow here. So you have a couple of options. One of them would be mount. So you can mount the, the desk itself and then move the files yourself and take them out um, and such. So there's also live clone, restore, replicate, and other options there. What we're really interested in today is restoration. So I want to restore the machine to the original state that it was before. So I'll click Restore. So what this shows me is pretty much um, a summary. What's going to happen is pretty much my machine um, has 60 gigabytes of data inside of it. So it's going to restore everything to the original state. So what I want to do is click Submit. So yeah, we need to confirm that it's going to be data lost. So anything that I've created afterwards, after that snapshot, if I added any extra work, that will be gone. It'll come back to the original state. Don't forget that. So once I click Confirm, it creates a job. So I'll show you what that is. So if we go to Job Monitoring, it should appear here in a couple of moments. So you can see a bunch of jobs I've done before. So I took a snapshot, I did some restores, I took a snapshot, I did some restores just for the purpose of the demo for testing. So in here you can see that it's running. It's 41%. So this is pretty much happening real time. So just want you guys to see how long it actually takes to restore the actual machine. So I don't know, in the meantime, let's wait and once it's done, you should be able to see the files reappear on the desktop. So let's give it a minute, and it should appear there. Again, if you have more files, um, it may take a little bit longer, may take a little bit less. It depends uh, very much on your setup, uh, on your network speed, and such. So as you can see here, the files just reappeared on my desktop. So I think I'm back in business. Um, and it looks great. So again, I think that concludes our demo. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know and really appreciate your time today. I hope everyone has a great day.
Thank you, Victoria and Paulo. It is amazing. She's very impactful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Lovely stuff. So, uh, if you have uh, any questions, we have like a Q and A. I've got a question. Do we get a certificate for this? Uh, well, it is the part of the certificate of uh, a professional cloud architect or uh, associate cloud engineer, and not the, uh, the the certificate just on the backup. Okay, thank you. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, everybody from Nigeria. I'm very grateful for this session, very impactful. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, actually, I'm the subject matter for my, for my plant, which I'm a child of SAP. So I just want to ask the correlation between Google Cloud and SAP. How, how does it work alike? As in, how, how, what, is, what is the correlation? How are they working alike? The combination of SAP and Google Cloud. So that's my question, if, if it is clear. Victoria Polos, answers? You give me a question. Polos, you are muted. Did you hear his question? Sorry, I was answering uh, Bogdan's question there, and I was talking to Victoria in the meantime. <laughs> so it looked like I'm talking to you guys. Sorry. <laughs> so I just sorry. Um, so just about that question, what do you mean exactly by the correlation? Because, for example, if you store your data in SAP HANA, we can integrate it into Google Cloud products. So you know, you can pull the data from there and do things with it but like if you could just clarify a bit what you mean by the correlation that would be great Well, like, uh, okay, Stephen, uh, anyway, uh, Google has the broad certifications for the SAP. There are some different solutions uh, which allows to uh, engage with the SAP in the Google Cloud. And actually, the, uh, it's one of the preferred platforms for the Google, uh, for, for the Cloud SAP. Uh, so, uh, if you if you are interested in uh, any um, uh, any details on that, you may uh, contact us on the on the address uh, hi at cloudflash uh, cloudflash.com. So, and we will give you the the pretty broad answer. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. So, actually, I I have your contacts. What's up? So I'll give that to you right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? If no, we are going to our last part, which is quiz. Uh, uh, as I told before, we will uh, give out the three uh, 35 or for 35 pounds worth certificates to the google merchandise store the mechanics will be the following i will show the question uh, then uh, show the question with the answers for 10 seconds and first who will uh, respond to the chat uh, will be the winner uh, uh, and so there will be three win three different winners for the three different questions so let's start.
what is recovery time objective? First variant is the maximum acceptable time that an application can be down. Uh, second, uh, the length of time it takes to perform a full system backup. Uh, third, the minimum amount of storage space you need for your backups. And fourth, the number of backups that are taking in a day. Okay, we have some answers. And the right answer is first one. Uh, the maximum acceptable time that an application can be done. Second question. How long does it take for disaster recovery uh, with cloud backup and disaster recovery service? It's we, we, we think about the meantime. First variant is uh, 14 minutes, uh, second 50 minutes, two days, and fourth is the 10 days. So the right answer is 14 minutes and the last question uh how can a cloud-based disaster recovery solution benefit businesses first answer is reduce downtime which me which sounds pretty reasonable uh second uh lower costs for hardware and software Third, increases security and reliability. And fourth, all of the above. So, the right answer is all of the above. So, uh, please help me and the... Um, uh, well, first question was, uh, first first uh, right answer was from Alexander B. Uh, second, um, somebody should have um, look after Who was on the second? Please help me, help me, help me. Uh, okay, so uh, of course goes to uh, go to uh, Ruffle, uh, Faisy, and Alexander Tsihanko. So uh, winners, please uh, write an email to the mail you see at the moment on your screen. Hi at cloudfresh.com uh and so we contact, we'll contact you and send you the certificates so uh that's all folks uh that's all for today thank you all for being with us uh thank you victoria and polios for uh joining us and help us uh have a nice day i hope that uh, the solution would be pretty useful for you.